God's going to do some good things. Amen. How many know we need we need to hear the word of the Lord? Yes. I want you to know, if you want your life to be changed, you need to hear the word of the Lord. There's a lot of voices right now. There's a lot of voices shouting and making noise, making proclamations. In fact, I can tell you that if you watch the news very often, you're going to be extremely upset. You're going to get mad at certain groups and things and all that. I quit listening to those voices. Listen, I got only so much time to do, get healthy input into my life. So I don't need to be listening to unhealthy input. They don't care what, what the news station it is. It's argumentative. I turn it on, I'm like, you know, why do you guys have to argue about everything? Right? Amen. So I'm getting the word of God. I'm like, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to be listening to all that junk on the radio or watching it. I'm going to have healthy input. Tonight, you're going to get godly input. The word of God, amen, which can mold and shape us and help us, amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight, right now, we want to take up an offering to give to the Lord. And uh, we have started uh, a outreach uh, for the year 2020. We call it Outreach 2020. And what we're doing is we're raising $20,000 to do outreach here in Colorado Springs, especially in our 80909 area, we're going to uh, begin to do a backpack drive this summer uh, for kids in need. We're going to uh, do some things with the, uh, the school, with the uh, police department. With, uh, we're going to do things with the uh, just different uh, agencies in, in our county, amen? And uh, but also, we're going to go to Lamar, Colorado. We're going to go to La Havana, Los Angeles, different places. We're going to begin to preach the gospel do healing crusades and, and just reach out. And so we're raising money for that. There's, a, there's a, a story in the Old Testament where King David had a vision. And his vision was to build a temple for God. Now the Lord told David that he wasn't allowed to build the temple because he was a man of war, a man of blood. And he said the temple could not be built by him because he had spent most of his life uh, in, in warfare. And he said, but your son will be able to build the temple. So you know what David did? He said, okay, we got a vision. In the future, we're going to build a temple. I may not be able to do it, but my son will. Let's raise money for the future event. And they began to raise money and, and resources and everything that would be necessary so that the time that Solomon grew up and became king, he had all the resources to build a temple. That's what we're trying to do. We're saying we want to raise $20,000, the resources, to be able to do outreach, to be able to say, yes, Lord, we're going to go, and we're going to go do a healing crusade in this city. We're going to go do a mission trip. We're going to go down here, and we're going to raise up these school supplies, and we're going to do these things. And so we want to encourage you to give Towards outreach 2020. So this would be above your time. It would be an offering. So you can text to give. And if you want to text the word give to the phone number 719-212-1344. That's 719-212-1344. Amen. And you can text the word give. For anyone else, you can get, uh, uh, we have the baskets in the back if you'd like to uh, take your offering back there. We also have to do uh, offering envelopes where if you don't have the phone or you don't want to text to give, just want to write down your information, uh, credit card information, give that way you can also. Amen. But we want you to give and, and begin to pray, God, how much money do you want me to give by the end of July for Outreach 2020? If you'll pray. I had someone tell me the other day, and, and this is a true story. They told me the other day, they said, I prayed, I said, Lord, if you'll give me $500, I'm going to give that to Outreach 2020. And that week, she got a $500 bonus on her check. Didn't even know it was coming. Isn't that something? I mean, you know, man, you, that's called, Lord, if you, if you put the money in my hands, I'll give it. Too many Christians 
just all, I, I don't have money in my pocket, I can't give. There's no faith there, is there? To activate faith, he said, Lord, you got, I feel like you're putting this number in my heart, so I'm going to ask you, if you'll give me that amount of money, I'll give it to the kingdom of God. All you're doing is being a conduit. How many would like to be a conduit, amen? What, what would you do if the Holy Spirit said, I'll give you $10,000? Woo! Man, you'd be like, bring it on, Lord. I don't know how it's coming, but bring it. Amen? Sometimes you just got to let the Holy Spirit stretch your faith. Stretch it a little bit, amen? So let's believe God. Father, we pray tonight over this offering. Ask you to bless it. Lord, for outreach, to bless us, Lord God, as we begin to reach out into the city and the other towns, Lord God, to preach the gospel. We ask you to bless us, Lord, to put money in our hands, Lord God, that we may go wherever you call us. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, tonight I want to preach the second part of a message called uh, uh, Time to Stand. Amen. And I preached this a couple of weeks ago. And so if you want to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 16, verse 13. Amen. There's something about uh, standing up. There's an old saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Amen. How many know that's true? If you're not standing for something, you're going to fall for something. If you're not standing, you're probably sitting on your butt. Amen? I mean, you know, it, there's, I, 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 I'm a hard worker, and there's one thing I can't handle. That is when work is needed to be done, and I'm, I'm working, or the other guys are working, you see somebody just sitting around, lazing around. Amen? How many know, man, there, there's a time to work. you got to stand up and be counted. So I'm all in, man. I, I'm going to stand. But also... Biblically, when we talk about standing, it's what you have to do to gain the victory. You have an enemy. The devil is against you. He's against your family. How many, just say in these last couple of months, you have had to stand against fear? Fear, right? I mean, I, I believe almost every, every person in America has had to face fear. There it is. It's right there. Dude, there's COVID-19, and now, you know, is there going to be civil unrest? And then you got people saying, oh, the president's going to, you know, uh, uh, say partial law, and, and uh, we're going to, you know, it's going to be crazy. And all of it, just voices everywhere. Fear. There's only one way to defeat fear. You've got to stand against it. You have to stand against it. If you give it a little bit, just a little bit, if you just back up a little bit, You've lost your, your strength. See, there's something about standing and what you do in, 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 the, in the military, in the times of, of the Roman Empire, when Paul wrote the, uh, a lot of the scriptures that have to do with standing, the Romans would, they would be in their armor, they would have their shield, and they would stand shoulder to shoulder, and they would create this, uh, this, 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 this a wall. And they would stand, and they would get this foot here, they get this other foot back here, and they would put that shield. And an army of soldiers would run and hit them. And I mean, it, it, they were immovable. They would get, they would hit those shields and just break their bones, man. Those shields. And once those people came to hit the shield, they would just take that short, short sword and stick it right between the other two shields and boom, just kill them. Next. Next group, come on. They know how to stand. Let me tell you something. If you give, if, if you're standing and the devil's trying to attack you with anything, and you begin to say, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of back up a little bit. What you've done is you've now lost your leverage. You, This is your leverage. When you begin to back up a little bit, when you begin to back out of your commitment, God. You begin to back up a little bit in fear. You begin to back up a little bit getting out of ministry. You begin to back up in your commitment in your marriage. You just begin to back up a little bit financially and doing your finances right. You just give in just a little bit. You know what happens? The devil just starts pushing you. You've lost your leverage here like that. The devil can hit you but you have leverage to, to handle it. But you start backing up a little bit 
he can just push you back. The other problem is, if some people, instead of backing up, they turn and begin to run. That's the most dangerous thing of all. Because the devil will stab you right in the back. How many want to be victorious in life? Come on. Listen, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been saved now for 37 years. I've been pastoring for over 30, about 32 years. And I've seen a lot. I've seen people get run over by the devil. Rip their family apart. I've seen people who were serving God and they, they just give in a little bit, back up a little bit, and just get run over in the backslide. I've seen people uh, go through divorces or kids go off the all crazy. I've seen just about everything. I have made a determination a long time ago. I'm going to fight. I, I know that the devil is a real enemy and I'm not going to give in. So we have to stand. But you have to learn how to stand. I, I'm a real big football uh, fanatic and, and uh, you know, I always like trying to rush the, the, the quarterback. I, when I play football, I like to play defensive end. Uh, and I wanted to rush the quarterback. And what was funny though, when I played on offense, I, I wanted to be the quarterback. It was either I wanted to either knock the quarterback down or I wanted to be the quarterback and throw the touchdown. But one of the things you learn is the offensive linemen, they have to be technicians. These boys are big, man. Have you ever seen an offensive lineman? They're like six foot six, 325 pounds. That's a big boy, man. Yeah. And they don't, you know, and, and you, you, once that ball is tight, they have to know. They don't go like this and put that left foot back. They're here, that right foot goes back. They know how to do it. They know how to get leverage so that that pass rusher can't just push them over. They know how to have that leverage. They know how to hit them. If they're in the running game, they know how to just take right off and just, man, hit that other defensive player and knock him right off the ball. You and I as Christians, if you want to be victorious, you're going to have to learn how to stand, how to fight. You're fighting, your spiritual warfare is fought from the stance. Everything is about the stance, how you stand. That is very important. How are you standing in the battle? How are you standing in ministry? How are you standing in your marriage? How are you standing in faith? Your stance is very important. Because if you don't have the proper stand, you're going to get pushed over. You're going to get knocked back. We talked a couple of weeks ago, and I'm just going to quickly go over this. But a couple of weeks ago, I preached about stand, and I, I did an acronym for the word stand. And the S meant submit. To God. Before you ever stand, you must learn how to bow to be in submission to God. You bow to His ways. You can't stand in your own strength against the spiritual force. You can only stand in the power of the Lord, the strength of His might. Amen? So you bow your knee first to the Lord before you stand in the Lord. So that S was for submit to the Lord. The T was take your position. You have to take a position. You have to know who you are in the Lord. You need to know what authority you possess, what power you possess, how the Lord views you, what position he's given you. He says, I raise you high above all principalities and power. We sit at the right hand of the Father just like Jesus does. Amen? So we, we, we have to uh, take our position. The A was act on your faith. Act on what you believe. Don't wait, but take action. The end was there was no turning back. You could never, if you're going to stand, you cannot call a time out and turn, turn your back on the enemy. The devil doesn't, he's a cheater. He doesn't fight fair. You never turn your back. The D in stand was then when you do all those other things, you'll defeat the enemy. You will defeat him. You'll stand firm and resist him. He will flee, the word of God says. Tonight I want to speak for a little bit about seven areas you must stand in if you want to have victory.
victory in your life. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13, this is our text. He says, be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Isn't it amazing that you get those kind of, of words in the Bible? The Lord's talking to us Christians. How many ever grew up and thought Christians were wimps? You know, Christians are sissies. Christians are those, you know, they, they just think they're good. And, you know, they're just too nice. Is that the word of God says, amen, about us, he uses military terms, fighting terms, there's all kinds of, I mean, as a man, I, I, I like it, amen, where you run the race to win, you fight the, the good fight of faith, amen, you put on the armor of God, that, praise God, that, you know, all of these things about wrestling and not against flesh and blood and against principalities and, and uh, how even, uh, you know, the, 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 if the enemy comes in like a the spirit of the Lord, that's on the standard. That's, a, that's military talk, amen? And uh, I like that because God is a God of victory. But how many know you don't have a victory unless you're in a contest? We're in a contest of life. The very first thing you're going to have to learn how to stand is in your position. That's very important. I talked already a little bit about it from the last uh, message, but to stand in your position, that means know who you are in Christ. You are the church of Jesus Christ. You are the representatives of Jesus on this earth. That's who you are. Don't think, oh, I'm just a church. You know, some people, I, I don't really have to go to church. I don't want to go to church, man. The church is God's army. The church, amen, is his warriors and his soldiers. The church, amen, is where victories are won. Yeah, come on. Amen. Yeah. Especially when the Bible calls us a bunch of sheep. I, you know, I've never seen no rabbit sheep, amen, you know. You, you, you don't see, I've seen some dogs, you know, even little chihuahuas. I mean, you know, the, 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 I, I just don't, I was, if you like chihuahuas, God bless you. I, I don't really like those little, you know, beady-eyed little chihuahuas, man. They, 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 they just, they think they're, you know, like uh, uh, St. Bernard. They think they're, you know, something big, you know. They, and I do like their spirit, amen, but... Man, those little, those little dogs, that they just act like they could just chew you up and spit you out, right? And, and they got an attitude. I want you to know something. The church, we need to have an attitude. Come on. We need to know we're the church of Jesus Christ. Right. We are the authority on the earth, the, the spiritual authority. Amen. Amen. The Bible says this. Listen to this. In Revelation chapter 1, 5, and 6, and in, uh, in the last part of verse 5, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has made us kings and priests. Hey. You know, when I take my position, I take my position as a king. Come on. I take my position as a priest. I take my position as the church of Jesus Christ. Right. I take my position as the son of the living God. I take my position, amen, as a soldier of Christ Woo! who wears not my armor, but God's armor. Amen. Yeah. He said, put on my armor. You don't even have to put your own armor. Put my armor on. Yeah. Because if I had an armor that had something called breastplate of righteousness, it may be a little dinged up. It may be a little, you know, scuffed up. But I get to put on the breastplate of Jesus' righteousness. Yeah. Amen? So take your position. Stand in your position. The second thing is that you need to stand in the armor of God. If you want to be victorious, don't stand without the armor of God. Some people go, well, and listen, I've seen, uh, I've heard teachings where you can pray, Lord, today, right now, I take the belt of truth, I put on the belt of truth, I shall walk in truth, Lord God, your truth, Lord, I shall know it, and it shall set me free, Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and Lord, I, I, I shod my feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Lord, wherever I tread today, Lord, I, I take authority in that place, Lord God, I'm going to go and I'm going to preach the gospel, Lord, I take up, Lord God, the, uh, uh, you know, the breastplate of righteousness, Lord, and I'm cold in your righteousness. And I've had that where you just break every piece of armor, and, and that's good. Amen. I like praying things like that. But let me tell you something. The armor of God, when you stand in the armor of God, you need to know one 
day and one day only. You're standing in Christ. You're standing in Him. To stand in His armor is like putting Christ on. Jesus Christ. Putting on His truth. Putting on His righteousness. Taking up His faith. How many know I didn't create faith and neither did you? Right? And the sword of the Spirit is His Word. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. You know why some people lose their victory, they stand in themselves. That's right. You can't stand in yourself. Yes. Listen, I battle the same battles you do. I know who I am. I had to repent yesterday. I had to repent, man. I, 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 I'm driving yesterday just minding my own business, going down powers, and I, I look at my rearview mirror, and here comes this dude, this little, little black, uh, you know, whatever, he saw a little hot rod in little car, and he comes up behind me, you know, and I'm like, man, this guy's just trying to, you know, next thing you know, he passes me on the right, and cuts me in front of me, you know, and flips me off and everything, I'm like, Your brothers 
and sisters. Yeah. Yeah. There's too much standing against each other. There's a lot of people that I'm, I'm making a stand by God. Oh, I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand against so and so. I tell you what, you should see what they did in ministry last week. And you should, uh, you, did you hear what they posted? So, you listen, when you're standing, you got to know 
So when, if you're trying to stand for justice, but you're being lawless while you're doing it, you drown it out what you're standing for. You have been fooled by the devil. So know what you stand for. Stand for others. Stand for others. Amen. We live in a broken world. We're called to pray for them, stand in intercession for them, to encourage others, to bring the gospel to others. Amen. The scripture says in Ezekiel 22, 30, so I sought for a man among them who would make up a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. The Lord said, I, I didn't find anyone to stand in the gap for the people. I want to be one that stands in the gap, stands for others. Amen. I can remember, listen, growing up, we, like I said, we just, we fought all the time. I, I can remember being in the first grade, getting into street fights with my neighbor and, and all of these things. And so it was normal in my life. And so I can remember the first day in middle school, I got on the bus, I, I, uh, I just transferred, it was actually the first day of, of a new school for me. I've been in one school for half of the year, uh, my seventh grade year. And so I got on the bus that day, and, and you know how it is. You're the new kid, and everybody else has already been, you know. But so hey, here I am. I'm walking down the aisle, and everybody's looking at me, and you know, I'm trying to be cool, and, and you know, I just really want to find a place to sit down without somebody lifting me off. And there was a young guy there named Lonnie, and he said, hey, sit down here. And I, I sat next to Lonnie. We became great friends. But anyway, on the way home, there being Lonnie, he had one of the jocks sitting in the back, man, throwing things at Lonnie and calling him names and popping him on the head. And, and, and this is my new friend. And really, the guy who was picking on him was, you know, he was a football player. I was a scrawny little kid growing up, and man. I probably weighed 115 pounds. And, and uh, you know, and here's this kid, kid football player. And, and I just couldn't stand it. After a while, I just said, Hey, man, why don't you just shut up? You know, we're tired of hearing you. Yeah. Well, how do you know when the new guy tells yeah. one of the established guys that? Not the same. Yeah, it's like, okay, I'll see you at your bus stop, man, here in a little bit. So I stood up for Lottie and, and got in a fight with this kid, and Lottie became my best friend. I was one of the only guys that ever stand up for him. Come but on. you know what? You have to stand for others. That's right. And sometimes you're going to take a hit. But you stand for righteousness. We stand for others. Amen. The fifth thing is we have to learn how to stand in faith. You have to stand in faith. Now here's something about faith. Faith is so powerful that it is the only thing that destroys the works of the devil. Faith has to have actions, though, to be alive and do its work. There, there's something. I, 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 this is what the Word of God says. In, in, in uh, Isaiah 7 9. Unless your faith is firm, I cannot make you stand firm. You have to have firm faith. Faith has to be willing to stand. But not only does faith have to stand, faith has to take action. Right. Faith has to take action. Amen. It says this in James 2 14 and verse 17 and verse 22. I'm going to read three verses out of James chapter 2, verse 14, 17, and 22. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Yeah. Verse 17. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Verse 22. You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. Now I want you to know there are two types of faith. Now there's more than two. You have weak faith, strong faith, and you know, little faith, a lot of faith. But I want you to think about this. The Word of God teaches us here in James, there is faith that is dead, and there's faith that is alive. Let me ask you something. If you've got a problem and you need help, do you ask a dead person to help you? No. Yeah, it's not. Not unless you're a little, you know, into witchcraft and things like that, seances. <laughs> Dead people ain't going to help you. You need someone who's alive to help you, right? Yes. The Bible says there's dead faith. Faith without 
without works is what? Dead. Dead. Faith with works, otherwise an action of faith is alive. Faith is there in you. You can quicken it and make it come alive, or you can just knock and it'll be dead. That the scripture says, listen to verse 22 again, you see his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. Your faith and actions work together. Listen, if you're trying to defeat sickness in your body, I was listening to a wonderful message by T.L. Osborne, who preached with this body back in the 1980s, and talked about how they were in a uh, healing crusade in, in, a, in a, uh, a Hindu area. A boy was there with polio, had the leg braces and everything. They're praying. He's preaching about faith. He's preaching about works and, and how Jesus is the healer. And he's praying. He said he saw that little boy on that, on that front row. And he's believing God. They prayed over him. You know what that little boy began to do? He began to take those braces off. Yeah. He began to take them off. He was taking them off. People were looking like, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's taking them off. And he gets up. And his first couple of steps, man, were almost fall down. But by the time he took about a dozen steps, all the strength was back in those legs. They said you could never tell that boy had polio. What happened was he had faith. The preaching of the word ignited his faith. But the faith was neutral at that moment. It wasn't alive yet. His works with the faith became alive, and now the faith worked with his action together. It did the work. See, we have to learn. I talked about this for prayer meeting a couple of weeks, Saturdays ago, about we need to begin to pray, Lord, show me how to have greater faith. Show me how to walk in faith. Show me how to use faith. Well, we need more faith. And you need to learn how to stand in faith. That means that not only are you standing still, but to stand in faith means that you start acting on your faith. You start actions on your faith. Well, what if I do that? What if I, you know, I quit taking the medicine? Or what if I take my glasses off? And it doesn't work. At least you try. You're learning, aren't you? I mean, oh, first time you try to hit a, 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 a baseball, I mean, did anybody just hit home runs right away? Yeah, just, it was just so natural. I mean, I was just popping around. No. Amen. You strike out a few times. Babe Ruth, amen, not only held the record for years for most home runs, he also held the record for most strikeouts. You're going to have to strike out a few times to get a home run. Come on. Amen. I'm not going to tell you that I've got this perfect formula for faith, but I can tell you what the Word of God says. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Learn how to walk in that faith. Amen. Sixth thing, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly, but the sixth thing that you have to stand in is serving. Mark chapter 10, verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life a ransom for many. When Judas came into the garden of Gethsemane with the soldiers, Jesus had to make a stand. He had to make a, a de decision. His decision was, am I going to stand here and serve mankind and allow them to take me and crucify me? Or am I going to do what my disciples are doing? Running to save your life. How many are glad that Jesus stands and served you? He's, he made a stand. I'm going to serve you. And he went to that cross serving us. Serving is not always easy. There's a romance in serving God and serving in ministry. I mean, you know, in the beginning, there's a romance. Yeah. You hear a sermon about all oh, the little children. 
Oh, how this little boy was six years old and his little Sunday school teacher taught him this thing and he grew up to become the great evangelist Billy Graham. Oh, how they wanted to teach children in the children's church. How do you, how do you, I want to teach, I want to teach that little boy who's going to be a great evangelist. It's romantic. How many want to go out and pioneer church and do great work for the Lord? I do. I do. But how many want to do this ministry? And then, oh, Lord, I want to serve. I want to serve. I have such a burden. Well, the romance fades, baby. Amen. Because you know what? It's like marriage. How many want to get married and live happily ever after? I do. I do. Oh, I do, Lord. You know, she's, she's everything. He's everything. The romance. Then you get married and there's a little, you know, honeymoon period. But then guess what? You're working on the marriage. You're working on raising a family. You're working. I mean, it's like, is this all we do now is work? Amen. Work, 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 work. You lose the romance. Yeah, real sense. So what do you do? You don't tuck tail and run. You have to learn how to stand in serving. Yeah. Serving one another. One of the best ways to learn what to do is, is how to keep the romance. Yeah. Even in ministry, I've learned how to keep the romance and pastoring. If not, I would have given up a long time ago. Long time ago. But I've learned to find the joy in obeying the Lord. I found the joy in doing what God created me to do. Is it hard at times? Yes. Every ministry is going to be hard. You have to know and learn how to stand in serving. If, if you always need someone to come and kick, start you and give you that, you know, encouragement and come on, you can do it. You know, if you always need, the, the, we all need a little bit of encouragement at times, don't we? I, I'm not against that. Come on, you can do it, man. We're going to do it. God's going to do it. God's going to do it. But if every time you're feeling down and you need someone to give you a, you know, a lift, you're not going to, you're not going to make it because there's not always going to be someone there to give you a lift. You're going to have to learn how to strengthen yourself in the Lord and say, God, you called me. You called me to that ministry, Lord. You called me to serve, to serve one another. And I'm going to do it, Lord. I'm going to stand and do it. I'm not going to quit. Come on. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to finish the race. This is what it says, Galatians 6, 9, and 10. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing okay. if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone especially to those in the family of faith. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't give up. Don't get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we're going to reap a harvest of blessing yeah. if we don't give up. Amen. How do you like that verse? I like it. Yeah. The last area that you need to stand is you need to stand with Jesus. Stand with Jesus. I thank God for our church. I love Victory Life Church. I love my church family. I've been a part of fellowship over the years. I've been a part of a lot of things, amen. And I thank God for those. But you know where I stand? I stand with Jesus. My identity is not even this name of our church. I thank God for it. I thank God that he placed me here and you here. But our identity is in Christ. See, I don't stand and go, oh, devil, you don't know how I've been raised. We're fighters. And we're, we're, we're evangelists. I'm going to stand in everything that I am. No, I stand in Jesus. I stand in Jesus. Jesus is my everything. I thank the Lord for everything he's given me and everything he's placed me in. But I am not ashamed of the Lord. I stand in with Jesus. Amen. Luke 9, 26 in the morning, he says, if anyone is ashamed of me in my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. We don't ever want to be ashamed of the Lord. Don't 
Don't be ashamed of the Lord when you're at work. Don't be ashamed of the Lord, amen, when you're, when you're talking to somebody, talking to a family member or a friend, amen. Never be ashamed of Jesus. In fact, I can tell you one of the greatest things you can do is have the name of Jesus on your lips quite often, amen, talking about Jesus. Don't just say God and church, amen. I think, uh, you know, I know God the Father, amen, but uh, when you say God, people can, de can define that however they want to. But when you say Jesus, Oh, even the devil's tremble, amen. amen. I am not ashamed of Jesus. I right. stand in and with Jesus Christ. Romans 1 to 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel Ooh. of Christ, amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer tonight. Amen. We're going to take some time just to come to this altar. And maybe there's an area that you need to stand in. The Holy Spirit's dealing with you. Maybe you need to stand in faith. Maybe tonight you're here and you're not saved or you're backslidden and you're walking with God. Maybe you're watching tonight on the internet uh, and you're not walking and standing in Christ. The Bible says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, I'll give you rest. Jesus went around saying, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me, follow me. What does he say? Come stand with me. He said, well, I've run. You're like a prodigal son. You ran. Or you're like the disciples on the night that Jesus was arrested. They ran. You know what the Lord didn't say? Forget you. He redeemed them. How many tonight you could be honest and say, I need to make a new commitment to stand with Jesus and be his follower. I need to ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm asking you to ask the Lord tonight to come to my heart. How many might have just lift up your hands? On the back side of the side, Pastor, I need to get my heart right with God. I need to make a stand. Maybe on the line you're watching, the Holy Spirit's dealing with you. The Lord's saying, I want you to stand. I want you to stand with me. No longer be ashamed of Jesus. Right where you're at, you can begin to pray and say, Lord, I commit my life to you. I ask you to come to my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to stand in you, Jesus. I want to stand for you. I'm telling you, you'll just pray in your own words and just repent of your sin and ask Christ to come to your heart. The Bible says he will forgive you. Your name will be written in the Lamb of the Book of Life. Amen. Praise God. We're going to open this altar. Let's stand together. And then we're going to open the altar. You come and pray. If you're in line, amen, we're going to uh, uh, let you go. But we want to encourage you right now you're at just to begin to pray right at your home. Amen. And let's come tonight. Amen. Maybe you need to stand for somebody. Maybe you need to, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to stand for your city or this nation, amen, right now. Or whatever it may be, maybe you need to learn how to stand in faith. But, but let's come tonight and seek the Lord. Take about five, ten minutes at this altar tonight to seek God. Thank you, Lord.